Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's Change of Command Ceremony, where Lieutenant General John S. Kolashevsky will relinquish command of 5th Corps and the Task Force Victory Area of Operations to Lieutenant General Charles D. Costanza. General Darrell A. Williams, the Commanding General of U.S. Army Europe and Africa, will officiate today's ceremony and has deferred honors to Lieutenant General Kolashevsky. Please join me in welcoming Voyevoda Agata Sobchek, Lieutenant General Marek Sokolovsky, and Mr. Daniel Lawton. A warm welcome to all of our families, distinguished guests, allies, and partners. Thank you for being here today. The commander of troops for today's ceremony is Colonel Fred Dente, Chief of Staff, 5th Corps. The color guard is from Headquarters and Headquarters Battalion and is led by Command Sergeant Major Philip Blaisdell, the 5th Corps Command Sergeant Major. The music for today's ceremony is performed by the 3rd Infantry Division Band under the direction of Sergeant First Class Ryer and the Polish Air Force Band under the direction of Lieutenant Colonel Hjokes. And I'm your voice of victory, Sergeant First Class Brian Chapman. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we ask all who are able to please rise for the arrival of the official party and to remain standing for the rendering of honors and the invocation by Chaplain Felsenberg. Let us pray. May Almighty God join us for today's ceremony and bless all those in attendance. Although times may change and may leaders, leaders may come and go, it is your divine presence in our lives that remains constant and forever certain. Nevertheless, it is incumbent upon us to salute leadership, those who have been chosen to lead America's finest, as well as the service members of our ally and partner nations who train and serve alongside Fifth Corps. The countless lives saved by Fifth Corps' ability to deter aggression and the credit and merit for its ability to do so has sat squarely and reliably on the shoulders of one man above all others for over three and a half years. We thank God for affording us the superior leadership of Lieutenant General Kolosheski, and we pray that divine blessings be upon him and his family in all future endeavors. Having excelled under his command, Fifth Corps now stands poised to embrace Lieutenant General Costanza. We ask that the Lord bless his leadership, enabling Fifth Corps to go from strength to strength. Watch over him as he leads through times of both trial and triumph. Lastly, we ask our Heavenly Father that he who makes peace in heaven above grant peace here on earth for us all, and let us say, Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, Specialist Deset from 2nd Cavalry Regiment and member of the Victory Corps in United States Army Europe and Africa Best Squad Competition winner is presenting a bouquet of red roses to Mrs. Buffy Kolashevsky. Red roses are symbolic of her devotion and dedication to the soldiers, families, and civilians of 5th Corps. They also represent 5th Corps' love and appreciation for her many contributions to the command and the community during her tenure here across Task Force Victory. Ma'am, your presence will be missed. Now a ceremonial shell casings are being presented to Lieutenant General Kolashevsky as we bid him farewell and Lieutenant General Costanza officially welcoming him to the victory team. These shells were fired in a 21-gun salute by a firing detachment in Fort Knox, Kentucky in honor of this change of command.
Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we ask all that are able to please stand for the playing of the Polish National Anthem, followed by the United States National Anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please welcome the acting Gen Con commander, Lieutenant General Marek Sokolowski. Many wise words were said today, which would be difficult for me to top. So, I will be the short brief. Today we say goodbye not only to a great commander, but above all to great friend. A man who, thanks to his Polish roots, understood the specific of our country, of Allied Armed Forces, but also to the Polish American USA relationship. I hope that General Koloszewski has not yet said the last word in beautiful career. Wish him with all my heart 
Good luck, Johnny. Good luck, Jan. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you for the cooperation and relationship between the Polish Army and USA Army. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Deputy Chief of Mission, Mr. Daniel Lawton. Dobre, good morning. It's a, it's a privilege to join you on this important day for Fifth Corps. General Williams, uh, Commanding General of United States Army Europe and Africa, and General Pappas, Commanding General of the United States Army Forces Command, thank you especially for being here. And to our friends in Poland, especially Pani Bovoide, Agata Sobczyk, and General Sokolowski, Thank you for being such gracious hosts to U.S. troops. Today, today we're honoring Lieutenant General Koloszewski and his contributions as the commander of the U.S. Army Fifth Corps. It's the culmination of 35 years of service. General, thank you. Thank you for everything you've done for our country, for Poland, and for freedom around the world. And we also welcome the new Victory Six, the call sign for the commander of Fifth Corps, Lieutenant General Charles Constanza. Ambassador Brzezinski regrets he could not be here today for this change of command ceremony, but he wanted me to share his congratulations, his personal congratulations and well wishes to both of you. And we also thank, and we also know that your work could not be done without the, the true support of your families. So thank you to Buffy Koloszewski. Uh, thank you for being such an advocate for Fifth Corps families. We know you've gained a lifelong friend here in Poland. And to General Constanza, I know you will find a welcoming community here. This is a critical time in history. President Biden has called it an inflection point. Russian, president's, Russian President Putin's brutal war of aggression threatens more than just the sovereignty of Ukraine. It's an assault on transatlantic peace and security. It's a rallying cry for all of us in the face of this threat. And Fifth Corps, Fifth Corps has stepped up in a big way. You are a key part of the United States' pledge to protect every inch of NATO territory. And I know President Biden was so pleased to, to host President Duda and Prime Minister Tusk on March 12th at the White House on the 25th anniversary of Poland's accession to NATO. In Fifth Corps, you are a key part of ensuring the enduring legacy of 75 years of collected defense, an anniversary and milestone that we are celebrating in July this year at the NATO summit in Washington, D.C. There's been no more successful defensive alliance in the history of mankind than NATO. Under the command of General Koloszewski, Fifth Corps has taken the lead on warfighter exercises, and this training has shown our ability to function seamlessly with Poland as well as other allies and partners. It shows that we are building an interoperable force to deter potential adversaries. And Fifth Corps has also helped launch the European High Mars Initiative, a series of conferences and workshops that help ensure that Poland can effectively man, train, sustain, and fight with this important weapon system. In general, I know you've carried Ambassador Brzezinski's message forward that every soldier, every American soldier here is also a diplomat. And you've inspired the American soldiers coming to Poznan to adhere to this message. And I know they are grateful and so respectful to our Polish hosts. These actions and so much more are the reason that President Duda awarded General Koloszewski the Knight's Cross of the Order of Merit of Poland last year. This is an incredible honor 
that also reflects all of Fifth Corps' work in strengthening our ironclad friendship with Poland. Under President Biden, the establishment of a permanent headquarters here in Poznan was truly historic. And we've also established our first permanent garrison in Poland, right, right here in Poznan, and the Army pre-positioned stock facility in Powitz is scheduled to be fully operational this year. And I'm confident that our cooperation with Poland will grow under the command of General Constanza. He recently served as the commander of the 3rd Infantry Division. And coincidentally, they are currently stationed in Bolesławic, where General Nori, who replaced General Constanza, is working. Thank you, General Nori, for being with us as well today. So General Constanza, you are surrounded by old friends, and you are surrounded by new friends here in Poland. We're looking forward to working alongside you as you deepen the special and strategic friendship between the United States and Poland. Gratuluje, congratulations, and best wishes to General Kolaszewski, his family, every success to General Constanza and his family. Thank you so much. Bardzo dziękuję. Headquartered in Fort Knox, Kentucky, and executing operations across the greater European continent, United States Army 5th Corps is America's only permanently forward-deployed corps. From Scandinavia to the Black Sea region, Task Force Victory is the Army's premier warfighting corps, providing sustained assurance and deterrence operation against enemy threats in Eastern Europe. The Corps remains focused on building allies and partners' capabilities and capacity to respond to crisis, and if deterrence fails, defend the sovereignty of NATO territory alongside our allies and partners. The change of command is an event that is rich with symbolism and heritage. The focus of the ceremony is the passing of the organizational colors. The organizational colors represent not only the lineage and honor of the unit, but also the loyalty and unity of its soldiers. The colors are the commander's symbol of authority and represent their responsibilities to the organization. Wherever the commander is, there too are the colors. Today, the 5th Corps Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Philip B. Blaisdell, the custodian of the Colors, will pass the Colors to the outgoing commander, Lieutenant General John S. Kolaszewski, for the last time. The outgoing commander then relinquishes his command by passing the Colors to the senior commander, General Darrell Williams, the U.S. Army Europe and Africa Commanding General, who is his senior in the chain of command. The senior commander then passes the Colors and hence the command to the incoming commander, Lieutenant General Charles Costanza where he will serve as the new commander of 5th Corps. This time-honored process is complete. ...back to the command sergeant major, charging him with maintaining the symbol of the command. Authority of Army Regulation 600-20, the undersigned assumes command 5th Corps and task force victory, effective 08 April 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, the USARAF Commanding General, General Daryl A. Williams. Unseat colors. Yadva Sobchik. Mayor Jaskowski, Deputy Chief of Mission, Mr. Lawton, General Retired Mika, my good friend, Drew Pappas from U.S. Forces Command. Good morning and Jin Dobre! <laughs> I'd like to also get a hand for the 3rd ID Band and the uh, Polish Armed Forces Band. 
Colonel Yokes, good to see you again. Woo. Aren't they great? Also to the soldiers on parade, thank you. You make us all proud. It's a great day to be here in Camp Kosciuszko, named after a hero of the American Revolutionary War, a Polish officer that came to the United States aid at our time of need. It is fitting that we conduct today's ceremony at a location that commemorates Polish-American cooperation as we face renewed threats together. I stand before you today with immense pride and gratitude as we reflect upon the exceptional tenure of General John Kolaszewski as the Commanding General of United States Army Fifth Corps. But today, as we bid farewell to John, we also extend our heartfelt appreciation to his dedicated wife, Buffy, who has stood steadfastly by his side throughout his remarkable journey. Buffy, your unwavering support and sacrifices have enabled John to serve with distinction, and for that, we are proudly grateful. Joining us virtually are John and Buffy's three daughters, Kelly, Emily, and Chrissy. Their support from afar is a testament to the strength and resilience of the Kolaszewski family. I would also like to acknowledge the other civil officials and general officers assembled here to mark this occasion, but especially Major General Chris Norrie, Commanding General of 3rd Infantry Division, who is here today to honor his brother-in-law, John. Activated in 1918, during World War I, U.S. Fifth Corps played pivotal roles in both world wars, notably in D-Day, the Battle of Normandy, and the Battle of the Bulge during World War II. Throughout the Cold War, it stood ready to defend the Fulda Gap. It later contributed to troops in the Persian Gulf War, Iraqi freedom, and enduring freedom supporting numerous major campaigns and operations. It's back in Europe at a critical part of our ally deterrence posture. With a legacy of adaptability and excellence throughout its history, it has demonstrated resilience, professionalism, and a commitment to mission success. With names of former commanders etched into our history books, including Summerall, Giroux, Abrams, Starry, Powell, and now John Kolaszewski. Fifth Corps has had a wealth of leadership. Now for a few of my thoughts. John's strategic timing and personal commitment ensured the Corps met urgent operational needs in Europe, achieving full certification within a year of activation and establishing Victory Corps forward here in Poznan as the U.S.'s only forward Corps. John brought Fifth Corps back to Europe. The Corps and its two divisions integrated with our allies and partners, executing its assure and deter mission in support of NATO. I cannot think of a better example to demonstrate the strength and resilience of Fifth Corps than its contribution to the newly formed multinational Ford Land Forces battle groups following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Amidst all these achievements, Lieutenant, Kolosevsky, Lieutenant General Kolosevsky fostered enduring relationships with our allies and partners, enhancing interoperability and reinforcing European security architecture. Today, as a key component of U.S. Army Europe and Africa, Fifth Corps continues to uphold its tradition of service and remains ready to meet current and future challenges. Fifth Corps, forward in Europe, is perhaps more important than ever before. It's here for the long term, focused on NATO's eastern flank, ready to deter and, if need, respond to Russian aggression as part of SACIR's new regional plans. We're going to build infrastructure. We're going to continue to build and train lethal warfighting teams and, of course, continue to build great relationships with our allies and our partners. Speaking of allies and partners, John, a few words from one of your, our friends to show you how much your work meant to our NATO allies. 
from Lieutenant General Posse Valamaki, Commander, Finnish Army. And I quote, Victory Six and Victory support and cooperation with the Finnish Army has been essential as we integrate into NATO. Today, our readiness with our allies and our warfighting capabilities within the Alliance are better than before. Victory Six, my friend, John, it's been a privilege and an honor to serve shoulder to shoulder with you. I wish Buffy and your family health and happiness. Today we are stronger together because of your determined and pragmatic leadership. And that's just one example. All of our allies last night and through the last few days as John has made his tour have echoed that similar sentiment. So as we bid farewell to Lieutenant General John Kolaszewski and his family, we also extend a warm welcome to Lieutenant General Charlie Casanza. As you assume the role of Commanding General of Fifth Corps, I offer my heartfelt congratulations. Your appointment comes at a pivotal moment as we transition to NATO regional plans, and we have complete faith in your ability to lead Fifth Corps with distinction and honor. I would like to recognize your family and the support they give you including your two daughters, Claire, who's a data analyst, and Emma, who is in medical school at Emory. I am sure they are proud of you as we are of you. A little bit about Fifth Corps' newest leader. With a distinguished career spanning over decades, Charlie has commanded units at all levels, including as commanding general of the 3rd Infantry Division. He has served in various operational deployments and combat tours, including operational, Operation Joint Guard, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Operation Iraqi Freedom, and Operation Inherent Resolve. With a wealth of military education and experience, Lieutenant General Costanza brings invaluable leadership and expertise to his new role. We know that your leadership and guidance will build upon the strong foundation laid by your predecessors. As you embark on this new journey, Charlie, rest assured of, we are rest assured of unwavering support and commitment to the success of Fifth Corps under your command. As you take the helm, I offer you one piece of advice and guidance. Army senior leadership refers to us as the tip of the Joint Force Spear. Your most important job is to keep that spear sharp. You are truly at the tip of NATO's spear. Your understanding, your planning, your readiness are critical to strengthening security and stability, to increasing deterrence, to building interoperability with our allies and partners, and if necessary, to defeating current and future threats to the NATO alliance. Mm -hmm. Charlie, I extend my best wishes to you, your family, and the Fifth Corps team. I know you are ready for the challenges we face, and I look forward to facing them with you. Welcome aboard and Godspeed. Thank you, Stronger Together for the Soldier. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General John S. Kolashevsky. So, Sergeant Major Blaisdell, if it's okay, can I just kind of tell them to shake it out here real quick? So go ahead, please just uh, shake it out there. Go ahead, stand at ease. Uh, go ahead. Uh, there you go. All right. Okay. <laughs> no push-ups there, General Norrie. Uh, no, no, no squats there, uh, Pat. Uh, so, uh, okay. Well, good morning, Engine Dobre. My name is John Kolaszewski, and I'm a Fifth Corps soldier. Today is a special day a celebration for this storied organization, and most importantly, our allies and partners. It is also a very humbling day for my family and me. We thank you all for being here. I too would like to first welcome our distinguished host country leaders, led by the acting GENCOM commander, Lieutenant General Sukolowski. Please pass on my best to both the Polish uh, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of National Defense, uh, as well as the Polish Chad, uh, General Kukula. I know both tried to make today's ceremony, but were unable. Welcome to the U.S. State Department, 
led by our Deputy Chief of Mission, Mr. Lawton. Welcome to our allies and partners from around Europe. Thank you for your steadfast support of our soldiers and our mission. I want to also give special recognition to the SAC Ur and the commander of U.S. European Command, General Cavoli, today's host, and LANCOM and USARAF Command in General, uh, General Williams, and to our Forcecom Commander, General Pappas, and his predecessor, General Mike Garrett. Gentlemen, you have my deepest appreciation and thanks for your steadfast leadership, your support, and for always providing direction, purpose, and motivation to me, this Corps, and our units. A special recognition to all the civilian and military leaders from across Poland, especially the city of Poznan, and also U.S. Army Garrison, Poland. And then back across the Atlantic to Fort Knox and its surrounding communities for being such great hosts for our 5th Corps Headquarters soldiers, Department of the Army civilians, and families. Our job would be much more difficult if not for your tremendous support, so thank you. To Command Sergeants Major Blaisdell and Bohannon, Sergeant Major Williams, uh, Fred Dente and the 5th Corps staff, the Color Guard, and both bands. So just on the bands, Lieutenant General Yokes has not been demoted and pushed over to the band. This is actually a family affair. Uh, so uh, uh, Colonel Yokes uh, and brother Adam, Lieutenant General Yokes, uh, are with us here today. But thank you all of those that have participated in coming together for this special occasion. We are so proud of each one of you. To my fellow U.S. senior leaders, including Tony Agudo, Major General Reagan, Mr. Mize, and to my 5th Corps Deputy Commanding Generals, Major Generals Tomlinson, Kingsbury, Jablonski, and Lambert, thank you for your friendship, leadership, and wise counsel. By my count, I have had 10 Deputy Commanding Generals during my ride with the Victory Corps. To include two former DCGs with us today, Lieutenant General Adam Yokes and Major General Matt Van Wagenen. I've also had the privilege to serve with three of the best non-commissioned officers in our Army, in Command Sergeants Major Webb, Harris, and now Phil Blaisdell. Your support and friendship were invaluable. And Lord knows I needed the help. Same with the first class staff, led by Fred Dente and our own HHBN, led by Jordan Bradford and Command Sergeant Major O'Malley. Thank you. I know it has not been easy keeping up with me and the mission but you've done it in spades. And finally, I've had the privilege to serve alongside the leadership of six different U.S. divisions in countless brigades, including 12th Cab, 41st Fab, 2CR, and 4th S Fab, all with unique personalities and contributions to the mission. To my successor, Lieutenant General Costanza, Charlie, first, congratulations on your promotion. Third star looks good, uh, and you wear it well. You could not be inheriting a finer set of national relationships or a finer group of soldiers. I am so glad that the Army picked you to lead this Corps into the future. I rest well knowing that Task Force Victory is in such capable hands. Almost exactly 75 years ago, as of this past Thursday, 4 April, the founding document of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization was formally signed in Washington, D.C. by its 12th inaugural members. The, party words, the, the party's words were, and I quote, determined to safeguard the freedom, common heritage, and civilization of their peoples, founded on the principles of democracy, individual liberty, and the rule of law. They seek to promote stability and well-being in the North Atlantic area. They are resolved to unite their efforts for collective defense and for the preservation of peace and security. To the, today, these words still ring true with the ironclad commitment of now a full 32 treaty members who will gather later, as mentioned, this summer in Washington, D.C. for the next NATO summit and to reaffirm this commitment. Today's ceremony, like everything this headquarters and its troopers do, also reaffirms the United States' commitment to European security and prosperity, specifically to NATO's eastern flank. Make no mistake, security is not a given. More than at any other period in the last 30 years here in Europe, we face dangers and uncertainty. 
Russian aggression in Ukraine threatens the freedoms and values for which previous generations fought so valiantly. I am certain, however, that the United States and our allies and partners will always face this aggression head on. Victory Corps was purpose built for this mission and has not and will not waver. Fifth Corps played a critical role in here in Europe from World War, World War I through the Cold War until its inactivation in 2013. And is starting again in August 2020, our colors were unfurled in the beautiful Polish city of Krakow at Kachusko's Mound, named for the same Polish and American hero as this fine camp that we call home. The list of accomplishments since our initial activations is long, achieving full operational capability in a short 12 months during a global pandemic, immediately responding to Russia's illegal and unprovoked invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, conducting numerous exercises, war games, and warfighting symposiums with many of the allies and partners in attendance today, and expanding our relationships and network of friends as we move forward. The 24th of February, 2022, changed Europe forever. It created the most complex threat environment seen in several generations. Despite this, the 32 members of the Alliance stand as one. The mission is important, the threat real, and our service right here, right now matters. While there is still work to be done, the consequence of anything but victory is high. And through it all, you did it with a sense of purpose and flair, understanding that failure was never an option. Whether a rotational unit or an assigned unit, you exemplified our promise, America's promise, to honor our treaty obligations and to defend this alliance. And we continue to invest our most precious resource resource, each of you on the field today and the thousands of soldiers you represent. We also recognize that our success is not what we have done individually, but because of what we have accomplished collectively, shoulder to shoulder alongside our European uh, friends and sisters unit, sister units. To those who have joined us during warfighter exercise, other command post exercises, multinational training events, and warfighting symposiums, especially those who have made the trip, the long trip, to celebrate with us in person, to include the commanders, the deputy commanders, and chiefs of staff or representatives from all 10 NATO corps, to General Mika, Lieutenant Generals Marlow, Sokolowski, Von Sandra, Yoks, Yoks uh, Jakob, Gowan, Perrin, Tomescu, Major Generals Cleese, Dan, Palm, Wagner, Rank, Radvilis, uh, as well as all five Polish-based division commanders, and the many others that are in attendance that I may have missed, I simply want to say thank you. You are friends for life. It was a Polish child, General Kukula, who recently said it best, you can always count on me. You can always count on me, and I have. So thank you. Today, I hand over this core with pride, believing that our service together has made a positive difference to secure the peace in Europe. This collective team will succeed against whatever challenge they may face. And Charlie, I look forward to seeing you take the core to new heights, and I'm confident you will. And finally, a special thank you to my wife, Buffy, uh, for your love and your devotion, and to our three daughters, Kelly, Emily, and Chrissy. I know these last three years, three and a half years, have not been easy, but your support for me in this outfit has been critical. Your mother and I, for our daughters, your mother and I are extremely proud of each of you. You are simply the finest people I know. And thank you and to, uh, for everything that you've done. And to Marn Six, Major General Chris Norrie, who has also had the unfortunate distinction of being my brother-in-law. Uh, Thanks, Chris, for your support on this journey together. We're extremely proud of you, my sister Kathy, and your two children. I know that if my father were still here with us today, he would be beaming with pride. And just to be clear there, Pat Work, CG 82nd Airborne Division, and all of the assigned brigades, 3rd ID got hit with just as many tasks and asks as you. 
There was no special family discounts to the 3rd Infantry Division, regardless of what you might hear. Uh, but in closing, thank you again for pri the privilege of serving with such a noble collection of professionals. I have been humbled to stand in your ranks. My deepest appreciation to the Corps and to the Army for allowing me the honor of a lifetime. And to Poland, and as a Polish-American myself, thank you. It truly has been a privilege to lead this formation from right here in Poznan. My name is John Kolaszewski, and I will always be a Fifth Corps soldier. Dziękuję. Victory, it will be done stronger together. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of 5th Corps and Task Force Victory, Lieutenant General Charles D. Costanza. Distinguished guests, family, friends, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being here. To my family, my friends, and those I've been fortunate enough to have served with, both here in the United States, both here and in the United States, thank you for the love and support over the past 33 years that helped make this day possible. First, I want to recognize and thank John and Buffy Kolashevsky, who over the past three years, through hard work and much personal sacrifice, quickly built Fifth Corps from the ground up in order to assure our NATO allies, deter Russian aggression, and maintain peace and freedom in Europe. John and Buffy, thank you for everything you've done, not only over the past three years, but over a career spanning over three decades um, to service to our country, our soldiers, Department of Army civilians, and their families. Thank you. Let's give uh, John and Buffy one more round of applause, please. I am proud once again to be part of the Fifth Corps family, the Victory Corps, America's forward deployed corps. Fifth Corps' origins and its history has always been tied to Europe. As General Williams described, Fifth Corps had a connection to Europe since it was established in 1918 as part of the Allied Expeditionary Force in World War I. It fought to help free Europe in World War II, and its forward presence in Europe during the Cold War contributed to the fall of the Soviet Union. Now Fifth Corps is once again forward deployed in Europe during another challenging and critically important time as Fifth Corps with our NATO allies deter Russian aggression and continue to maintain peace in Europe. I'm, I'm also proud to be part of my new Polish family. I, I might have to change my last name. It's Italian. It's not Polish, but we'll work on that, right, General Yokes? Okay. Um, as Poland is now my new home, I look forward to learning from you all, training with you all, and if required, fighting alongside you as we once did in World War II, the Balkans, Iraq, and Afghanistan. As you all are very well aware, and as General Kolaszewski described, last week marked NATO's 75 years of collective defense across Europe North and, and North America. NATO is the most successful defense alliance in history, and I am blessed to be serve as part of the NATO family during is what is perhaps the most critical and dangerous time in the Alliance's history. We are truly stronger together. I look forward to continuing to build wartime readiness with you, our NATO partners, in order to deter aggression, Russian aggression and, if required, defeat that aggression should deterrence fail, in order to defend every inch of NATO territory and create a more peaceful and prosperous future for all of us for our children and for our grandchildren. Before I walk off, I would be remiss if I did not recognize the best damn band in the land, the 3rd Infantry Division Band. Great to see you all again. General Williams, recognizing that 5th Corps is the tip of the spear as you described, um, I promise that I will keep that spear sharp. It will be done stronger together. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we ask all who are able to please rise for playing of the 5th Corps song and the Army song, and then remain standing for the departure of the colors. Big door. 
This concludes today's ceremony. The combined band will now play a special dedication to Lieutenant General Kolashevsky, My Way, by Frank Sinatra. Please join General Williams in congratulating Lieutenant General Costanza in a receiving line in Building 52 and bid farewell to Lieutenant General and Mrs. Kolashevsky on the parade field. Please remember to visit the iLab before 1300 and also visit one of the armored transport displays located around the track provided by the Polish Army. Thank you for attending. It will be done. Victory.